You'll be astonished at how much time this episode is going to save you when it comes to creating your own MetaTrader 5 trading bot with Python. Let's check it out. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to connect your Python programming language to the MetaTrader 5 terminal. It's actually pretty straightforward in this episode, although it took me many hours to work it out in the first place. You'll need a couple of things in order to complete this episode, and there's also a bonus feature that I'll be showing you as to get there. The first thing that you need is a working MetaTrader 5 terminal, and that's really critical because the first thing that the MetaTrader 5 Python programming language module does is try to start up MetaTrader 5. The second thing that you'll need is a really, really good IDE or integrated development environment. You can check out my earlier episode on creating one that's powered by uh, ChatGPT4 if that's helpful to you. Otherwise, use whatever works for you. And now, onto our exciting bonus. If you go to the GitHub repository that's linked in this episode, you'll see that I've created a great little shell for this to start. This cool little thing that uses Streamlit as its user interface will really simplify your ability to build this trading bot. It's completely free. All you have to do is just reference me if you ever want to use it somewhere else, and I believe it will provide you with a huge amount of power as you continue on building your trading bot. But for now, let's get into the code. Here's what we want to achieve in this episode. Firstly, we want the ability to start our MetaTrader 5 terminal, and we want to be able to do that using either a settings file or by inputting the numbers. So using this little user interface, which I'll show you, we can choose this. So we choose a settings file if we choose yes. We can go to our trading platform, choose MetaTrader 5, and it will start our MetaTrader 5 for us, which is pretty awesome. We could also try to do this by not using a settings file, in which case we want to be able to put in the username, password, server, and file path here. That's our goal when it comes to actually starting the terminal. So how do we do this in code? I'll quickly run you through this app.py, but in this particular episode, I won't actually be showing you how to code it. It's fairly complex and also kind of detracts from the learning experience, but it's also all here just in case you want to be able to do it for yourself. You can see here we start with our if underscore name equals main, so if the main file is run, we do something, and then we do a whole bunch of setup using Streamlit. You can definitely go through all of this code, it's completely open source, and down the bottom here we can just run our Streamlit server by running streamlit run app.py. So that's all that we're doing for the user interface. The really interesting stuff for the MetaTrader 5 terminal comes in here. So here's what we do. Up the top, we start by importing three main files. We have our OS module, which is a built-in Python module, and that inter controls our interfacing with the operating system. We have .env, which is a way of loading up our .environment variable settings from a file. And then we have our MetaTrader 5 uh, library. Now you can get this by running the command pip install MetaTrader 5, or you can do it through your requirements.txt. And we want to load our environment variables using this .env file here, which is pretty cool. Here's our function that we use to actually start MetaTrader 5. We have here this define start MetaTrader 5. So we have mp5 username, which is equal to none, empty5 password which is equal to none, empty5 server is equal to none, and empty5 file path which is equal to none. Now in Python how this works is we start by setting up our code in a way that we're defaulting to none. And if we have none ver value in any of these, we want to cover that by using our ability to load from the dot environment variables. So if we don't have an empty5 username, or we don't have an empty5 password, or we don't have an empty5 server, or don't have an empty file path, we want to default to going and getting that from our operating system in our .m file. The reason why this is really helpful is because it means that if you forget to add in a variable or something goes wrong otherwise in your code, it's still going to default to the variables that you've loaded in your .m file. Of course, if you're going with the option of not using a .m file, then that's not going to work, but that's a totally different uh, approach to what we're trying to achieve here. Moving forward into the function, we then want to assign our variables. So if we do have these variables here, up here, then we want to assign them to the uname, p word, server, and the terminal 64 file path. Pretty helpful. Next thing we want to do is to check if the file path that we've provided in our terminal 64 file path is actually there. If it's not, we're going to raise an exception. 
Now we add this check in here because you may have multiple different versions of MetaTrader 5 on there and you might just reference the wrong location for it. Debugging your code is not really going to add any value if it's just a simple file, wrong file name. So this particular check simply just tells you did you or did you not reference the right place to open up your MetaTrader 5? If you did, totally fine, let's go for it. Once we've done those checks, the next thing that we need to do in our code is to turn all of the different inputs that we've provided into the right kinds of input. Now this is actually really important. If you don't do this, there's a good chance that it's not going to work for you. So make sure that you add this code in. Our username or uname needs to be an integer. So that we do that in Python by declaring an int and adding in our uname. The password or p word needs to be a string. The server needs to be a string and the file path needs to be a string. Now I've covered this in my code, but just make sure that when you're adding in the file path, you don't get caught out by the backslashes. All right, so so far what we've done is we've gone through and we've imported our variables. We've checked that our terminal exists in the file path that we've provided. And now we need to go ahead uh, and start it up. There's two stages to this, and I don't really know why there is. Um, it's a bit odd, I have to say, but that's how MetaTrader 5 works, and so we'll just work with it. Stage one is starting MetaTrader 5. So as you would have seen when I showed you the user interface, the first thing it did was actually open MetaTrader 5 for us, which is pretty helpful. And that's the MT5 start, and we use that by using the MetaTrader 5 library to initialize our MetaTrader 5. There's four variables we need to pass in to do that. We've got our login, which is our username, our password, which is our p-word, our server, which is the server, and our path, which is the terminal 64 file path. If you don't pass these four in, it won't start, and obviously that's a problem for us. Interestingly, if you pass in the wrong username or wrong password uh, or wrong server, it also won't start. Sometimes when you put in the wrong server, it will start, but it won't go any further, which can also be a bit weird. Point being, you need all four of these variables and they all need to be correct. Here, we just raise an exception if it doesn't start. So that tells you immediately where to go if there's a problem and to start figuring it out. Now here comes the second and what I think is a slightly odd stage. Once you've started your MetaTrader 5 using the exact same set of variables for your login, password and server, you now need to log into your MetaTrader 5. I don't really understand why that's the case because if you put in the wrong login and password to start MetaTrader 5, it won't start, but somehow you still need to log in. So we do that by using the MetaTrader 5 library and the login function there. So we log in with our login, password and server and away we go. Once again, if we don't, if there's any errors, we just raise that exception. And if we do log in, then we print that as logged in and we return true. If we don't log in, then we tell you that MetaTrader 5 has failed to log in. Now, all of these times we see raise exception, the way that I've set up the user interface is going to tell you on the user interface why it's not working, which can be super helpful when you're trying to debug. So I really recommend you go to the GitHub repository and check this out because it will really help you. That's how you go about starting a MetaTrader 5. One of the things that you might find when you log into your MetaTrader 5 is that if you're using a brand new account, this algo trading is actually going to turn to red. What this will then mean is that suddenly you can't do any trades, so you have to manually go onto your MetaTrader 5 and set that to algo trading. This only happens when you start up with a new account, and you can change that in your settings, but that's outside the scope of this. And it's just really important to note that you double check this if for some reason you find that it's not trading. In the next episode, we're going to go a little bit further with this, and I really can't wait to show you how to do it, so I'll see you.